How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Mother Spongebob 1000 and in this video we're gonna determine when we could see Tropical Storm Danielle form in the Northern Atlantic. Could we see it as early as next week? We do have a tropical wave that the European Mall wants to bring into the main development region by next week that could potentially have the chance of developing into Tropical Storm. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more what they call it. So we are taking a look at two areas in the Atlantic where there might be that potential where um where a tropical storm could form. And one of those areas is of course the Southwestern Caribbean, which we've been talking about over the past several videos, where we're just gonna see a lot of moisture just to the south of the main development region move into the southwestern Caribbean and it should bring a lot of moisture to the southwestern Caribbean as well as a lot of tropical cyclone fuel for the eastern Pacific where we're gonna see likely multiple tropical storms and potentially hurricanes develop in the eastern Pacific as a lot of this moisture will move westward however this moisture will move to the southwestern Caribbean as well and we could potentially see um, the chance of a tropical wave um, to develop into a tropical storm. But another area where, of course, taking a look at is the main development region where the European model, as of the latest run, is bringing somewhat of a pretty strong tropical wave into the main development region. Of course, relatively speaking, it's still fairly weak. Its millibar pressure is around 1,014 millibars, so it's still considered a weak low pressure system in general but compared to what we've been seeing over the past several weeks where the stable air has just been dominating the main development region this is definitely different from what we're seeing where we're seeing enough moisture to where it's at least holding its own and while it isn't necessarily shutting into a tropical storm we do see that there is enough moisture around it to pretty much shield itself from a lot of the dry air that's just to the north of it which is definitely something interesting to watch going into next week and if we were to take a look at how the upper level winds will be in the main development region based on what the european model is stating you see that the wind shear won't really be that strong over the main development region of course we are seeing a strong upper level high that's just the south of it but the strong upper level winds are located just to the south of where the soil pressure system is located and we are seeing strong wind shear associated with um with um a low uh, upper level low that's just the north of it but for the most part, we do see that um, the wind shear over this low pressure system is fairly light, which is a little bit concerning because if we do see enough moisture out along with the um, this lack of wind shear we're seeing, then there is certainly a possibility that we could see a tropical storm develop in the main development region by next week, which would be very far out in the future because if um, I were to show you guys, look how far... I'm at with this forecast around the six to seven day mark, which is around Monday, August 8th. So there's still a lot of time for the European model and the GFS model to iron out the forecast, but it's at least something interesting um, that we're now starting to see a little bit more uh, moisture and a tropical wave moving in the main development region where it could potentially avoid just enough dry air and just enough wind shear to where it could have that possibility of developing in the main development region. So it's at least something to keep in mind take a look at what the gfs model is stating the gfs model it is expecting less um not a lot of wind shear as well there is a decent amount of wind shear just the south of the main development region but again if uh if a tropical wave were to move through the main development region for the most part it would avoid a lot of wind shear which would definitely uh, make conditions more favorable for tropical cyclone development. However, the GFS model is a little bit less lenient on developing any sort uh, or bringing any sort of um, strong tropical wave to the main development region that could have the possibility of developing because you see that while there is moisture where the main development region is okay, we aren't seeing that well-defined low that the European model is bringing in the main development region, which definitely does diminish the chances because of course the air pressure won't be low enough for the convection to be strong enough for uh, um, the potential of a tropical cyclone to be there in the main development region. So we're going to see which one is going to win out. Right now the GFS model is expecting a little bit more stable air over the main development region which is certainly an inhibiting factor um, 
which would be an inhibiting factor ahead into next week. So you see that the dry air is a lot more abundant in the GFS models case than the European models case where it does expect um, just enough of a strong tropical wave to bring uh, to moisten up the environment over the main development region. So it's only something to pay close attention to over the next several days. So highly uncertain, but um, it's at least something to be aware of now that the European model is taking somewhat of a strong tropical wave into the main development region. So it's at least something we're going to need to pay close attention to over the next several days. But that's not the only area where we're going to need to pay close attention to. We also need to pay attention to the southwestern caribbean where we're of course gonna see a lot of moisture move into the caribbean over the next several days saying look at the gfs model um as of right now look at how much moisture there is throughout northern south america and into the south southern portion of central america there is a lot of moisture and that's pretty much um creating a lot of tropical cyclone genesis right around the eastern pacific developing um developing numerous tropical cyclones it's expected to develop numerous tropical cyclones in the eastern pacific over the next several days and potentially into weeks so if i were to continue move forward we do see that moisture move northward into the southwestern caribbean we do even do see um, some well-defined low pressure systems right around the southwestern portion of the Caribbean and pretty much embedded in this moisture and you see that there isn't a lot of dry air getting entrained into the, uh, this swath of moisture. We um, This is um, the Central America is under uh, pretty strong gyre at this time so there is a possibility that convection could be strong enough for a tropical storm to form however there are other inhibiting factors because for one thing is that this moisture is moving more towards a westerly direction rather than a northwesterly direction and what that means is that a lot of that moisture is once it heads towards the southwest and caribbean would move straight towards land and of course between the between let's say the coast of colombia and the central american coast there isn't a lot of time for a low pressure system to organize itself and develop into a tropical storm between that time period so as a result it um, um a lot of these um uh, most of this moisture will just be relegated to staying as tropical waves rather than having the potential of developing into tropical storm however if we were to see a more moisture move northwestward to where it'll have a lot more of an open area where it could strengthen in um throughout the caribbean then the chances would definitely increase for a tropical storm to form and um the gfs model does bring a decent amount of moisture for a northward but it's not really a, um, i'd say it's not really a ton um to where it's confident enough to say a tropical storm will develop but it's at least something to pay attention to with all this moisture moving northward towards the caribbean so it's only something to keep in mind um but another inhibiting factor is of course the upper level winds because while um where the upper level because while the upper level winds um in the main Deval region will be relatively weak um the it's called the complete opposite when we take a look at the upper level winds right around the um right around where the gfs um right around the caribbean so if i were to show you guys the wind shear map um, between the low levels and the uh, upper levels of the atmosphere we do see that the wind shear is quite strong where we do have a pretty strong upper level high that's located right around the southwestern caribbean so it's only something to keep in mind and we do see that the wind shear is um very strong which is inhibiting a lot of moisture from um um which is inhibiting a lot of this moisture from really organizing itself to a point where it could become a tropical storm so that's only something to keep in mind throughout the southwestern caribbean as it's um as we could potentially see a tropical storm develop right around the um caribbean if the wind shear is light enough but we just have to wait and see it at this point the wind shear seems very strong so it's going to be difficult for that to happen but it's definitely something to keep in mind with that much moisture in the caribbean and there, we just need to see where that upper level high will be located and of course the land interaction as this moves northward so it's only something to be aware of over the next several days um so um if i were to show you guys now the um, ensemble member data we do see that the 
GFS model, it, um, we do see that some members are bringing a tropical wave right around the main developed region and entering the Caribbean where we do see um, a low pressure system moving northward. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. Um, and we do even see some stronger ensemble members move northward. So um, so it's definitely something we're going to need to pay close attention to over the next several days. And same goes for this um, computer mall where we do see the ensemble members bring um, um, develops a low pressure system or a tropical wave right around the main developed region. While none of them are, while not a lot of them are necessarily developing a tropical storm, a tropical wave is um, exists in the main developed region, which it could be enough for that potential for a tropical storm to develop. Now, here's my forecast when it comes to when tropical storm um, Danielle could develop. So most likely this will happen into next week. Um, once we see that more moisture move into the main development region as the European mall is developing tropical waves and um, we could see more moisture right around the Southwest and Caribbean by next week as well. So it's something, something to keep in mind still highly uncertain. We've been talking about this over the past several weeks, but um, we're all we're, but what, when it comes to weather, we're always taking a look at every possibility. We could potentially see a tropical cyclone because it's, of course, very important to determine when that will happen. But yeah, guys, like I said, that's it for this video. I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. I hope you guys have a great day.